We ask that you remain silent during these times, reflecting the price that has been paid for our freedom. Third, we ask that you pay respect to the flag during the national anthem. Military members and veterans in uniform will stand at attention and render a salute. Civilians should stand and place their right hand over their heart. Veterans and military members not in uniform may render a salute or place their right hand over their heart. After the last note of the national anthem, you may return your hand to your side. Now marching into position, flight 198 led by Technical Sergeant Atif Siddiqui. Flight 199, led by Master Sergeant Rachel Armstrong. Flight 200, led by Technical Sergeant Brian Weimer. Flight 201, led by Technical Sergeant Richard Thompson. Flight 202, led by Technical Sergeant Sean Neary. Flight 204, led by Technical Sergeant Luis Bedoya. Flight 205, led by Staff Sergeant Clarissa Wilkes. Flight 206, led by Technical Sergeant Victor Gonzalez. Flight 207, led by Technical Sergeant Dwayne Funderburg. Flight 208, led by Master Sergeant Mike Jones. Flight 209, led by Technical Sergeant Alicia May. Flight 210, led by Technical Sergeant Desmond Anderson. Flight 211, led by Technical Sergeant Philip Edwards. Musical support for this morning's ceremony is provided by 323rd Training Squadron, performing under the direction of retired Master Sergeant Samuel Johnson, Master Military Training Instructor, hometown, Stratford, Connecticut. These individuals have been hand-selected to perform for today's ceremony. In addition to completing all basic military training syllabus and training requirements, Drum and Beagle Corps members commit additional training hours for practice throughout their weeks of training. Extra effort and commitment demonstrate teamwork and the Air Force's core values service before self. With each Drum and Beagle Corps performance, they honor the long-standing tradition of live music at formal military ceremonies. Please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Pacuar. Let us pray. Heavenly God, today we ask your blessing on this great occasion when we celebrate what has been accomplished through hard work and determination of this fellow airman. 
We thank you for the dedication and skill of the leadership, MTIs and staff, and for the love and support of family, friends, and loved ones. We pray that what has been learned in this time of training has instilled in them a lasting desire to maintain and defend our great nation's high principles of freedom, justice, and dignity for all. Almighty God, bless them with wisdom, courage, and strength for the task ahead. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Chad. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Good morning and welcome to today's basic military training graduation ceremony. We would like to introduce our distinguished guests, beginning with the host for today's ceremony, the commander, Air Force Basic Military Training, and 1990 graduate of basic military training, Colonel Jeff Pixley. <clears throat> the senior enlisted leader, Air Force Basic Military Training, and 2003 graduate of Basic Military Training, Chief Master Sergeant Dan Anderson. From the graduating squadron, the commander, 324th Training Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Michelle Sterling. The senior enlisted leader, 324th Training Squadron, and 2001 graduate of basic military training, Chief Master Sergeant Alan Frank. Also in attendance with us today, the Command Chief, 37th Training Wing, and 1994 graduate of basic military training, Chief Master Sergeant Mike Morgan. Although time does not permit us to introduce all of our distinguished guests, the 737 Training Group is proud to welcome each of you. We hope you enjoy today's ceremony. <laughs> Chief Master Sergeant Frank will now come forward and address our graduating class. All right, good morning, Knights. Good morning, family and friends. Thank you for sending us these amazing men and women. I'm so, so excited to welcome them and you into this Air Force family. Also, let's give a hand to our military training instructors and our support and tunnel staff who put their heart and soul into this mission to grow these airmen. In February of 1969 in South Vietnam, Airman First Class John Lebito was performing loadmaster duties aboard an AC-47 Dragon ship when the aircraft was sent to destroy mortar positions. They were hit with a mortar shell, sending shrapnel into him and his teammates, causing another member to drop a magnesium flare. Stunned and wounded by shrapnel, he flung himself onto the flare, drug it to the cargo door, and threw it out, saving the lives of his crew, his fellow crew members, and the gunship. In June 2006, while deployed to Iraq and meeting with Iraqi officials, enlisted Special Agent Greg Carmack observed a vehicle approaching his team at a high rate of speed, striking an Iraqi police officer and breaking through the cordon. His training kicked in and he engaged the terrorists, saving the lives of his team and the Iraqi officials he was tasked to meet with. In January of 2020, while deployed to Kenya, Technical Sergeant Jordan Locke was performing duties as a security forces defender when Al-Shabaab terrorists attacked Cooperative Security Location Manda Bay. He and his team engaged in an hours-long firefight, eventually repelling the terrorists and preventing further casualties. These were ordinary airmen, ordinary airmen just like you, who answered the call to serve their country. Later, they deployed in harm's way to support its interests, and when crisis struck, they were ready and willing to put their lives on the line to protect their brothers and sisters in arms. These airmen did extraordinary things, and there are countless examples like these by people who stood right where you are now. And as you stand here right now, there are ordinary airmen doing extraordinary things all over the world while fighting alongside our sister services and international partners. As our newest airmen, you may soon do the same. Committing to defend the American way of life is hard work. There's a cost to calling yourself an airman in the world's greatest air force. You will sacrifice many things that your civilian friends and family may not. It's hard work. Basic training is work to transform you from a civilian into an airman. 
and you will continue to receive training to do the jobs we will ask you to do. But your preparation isn't over. How ready you are, how mentally tough you are, and how resilient you are, that's up to you. Every one of you during your Air Force journey will be faced with difficulty, challenges, and adversity. It's what happens after that counts. I will tell you that getting up after being knocked down is much harder if you haven't done anything to prepare for it. Nassim Taleb, in his book, Anti-Fragile, Things That Gain From Disorder, says, wind distinguishes a candle and energizes fire. Likewise, with randomness, uncertainty, and chaos, you want to use them, not hide from them. You want to be the fire and wish for the wind. So you can be a candle, easily blown out when hit, when hit with setbacks, or you can be a raging fire, energized by them. There are a few things I want to recommend that you do early on in your career. Number one, surround yourself with positive people who push themselves and you to be better. Stay away from the woe is me, can't catch a break crowd, or people are always making themselves out to be a victim. They will rob you of your optimism, your pride, and your enthusiasm. Two, focus on the things that you can control and try not to expend energy on the things that you can't. And number three, come to realize that the very thing you may want in a specific moment might possibly be the opposite of what you actually need. Facing challenges and adversity is not a matter of if, but when. So be prepared, be strong, and be resilient. Things may not always go as planned, but remember you're always just one decision away from changing your entire life. I couldn't be more honored to stand in front of you as your first chief. I am incredibly proud of how, I am incredibly proud of how far you've come. Keep preparing, keep growing, build your mental toughness and resiliency, and there's no doubt we will hear about the extraordinary things that you do very soon. Thank you for your service and your sacrifice. As your senior enlisted leader, I hereby acknowledge your completion of all graduation requirements and have recommended to Colonel Pixley and Chief Master Sergeant Anderson that you receive your coveted airman's coin, which signifies your transition today from trainees to airmen. Congratulations. Instructors, you may proceed. At this part of the ceremony, the military training instructors will distribute the Venerable Airman's Coin and for the first time, distinct Space Force coins to our Space Force graduates. The lore of military coins has many colorful suspected origins. However, a popular story stems from World War I, where American volunteers formed flying squadrons in France during the Great War. One of the volunteers was a wealthy lieutenant who took great pride in his service and had medallions cast in bronze, with his squadron's emblem on them. He gave those medallions to every member of his unit. Not long after, one of the pilots was shot down behind enemy lines and was captured by a German patrol. The German forces confiscated the pilot's possessions except for the pilot's medallion that he wore around his neck. While in confinement in a small French village, the captured pilot took advantage of a nighttime bombardment by the Allies. He donned civilian clothes and escaped after crossing the front lines to safety. He came across a French outpost where he was initially thought to be a saboteur until he showed them his unit coin. The French forces recognized the unit emblem and instead of any harsher treatment, he received a bottle of wine. Today, several military units have developed their own coins and specific rules for them. Many organizations give out their unit coins to recognize outstanding performances and achievements. The coins the airmen and space professionals receive today are unique in that they originate here at the gateway to the Air Force and are only given to those who complete this rigorous course of instruction. On one side of the airman's coin, the original emblem of the Air Force resides as envisioned by General Henry Hap Arnold, one of the first military aviators 
and later commander of the Army Air Forces in World War II. Beneath the emblem, the year 1947, the birth date of the United States Air Force, and around the rim of the coin, the core values of the Air Force. Integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Inscribed on the other side of the coin is the newly recognized emblem of the Air Force, a symbol that honors the heritage of our past and represents the promise of our future. The emblem retains the core elements of the Henry Hap Arnold emblem, the Arnold Wings, and the star within a circle. The modern effect of the emblem reflects our air and space force today and into the future. Inscribed in a half circle above the contemporary Air Force emblem is the Air Force motto, Aim High, Fly, Fight, Win. And on the border of the coin, a reminder to all who see this is inscribed, awarded on the occasion of becoming an airman in the world's greatest air force. The Space Professional coin also has a distinctive design. On one side, it displays the original emblem of the Space Force, the Delta, which was first used by space units in 1961 and honors the heritage of the United States Space Force. Beneath the emblem is the year 2019, the birth date of the United States Space Force. Inscribed on the other side of the coin is the Space Force motto, Semper Supra, which translates to always above. This represents the Space Force's role in establishing, maintaining, and preserving our nation's dominance and freedom of operations in the space domain. On the coin's border is a commemorative inscription that reads, awarded on the occasion of becoming a charter member of the United States Space Force. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Sterling will now come forward and address our graduating class. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. What an honor it is to look out into the audience and see all the families and loved ones joining us today. It is my great privilege to introduce today the 597 airmen from the 324th Training Squadron as our nation's newest airmen. As a parent of a child about the same age, beginning to make their way in the world, I know a little of the potent mix of emotions you are probably feeling. Pride and joy intermixed with the protective nervousness of sending your loved ones off into the unknown. It may or may not make you feel a little better to know that my mother, an Air Force spouse herself, still occasionally refers to my joining the Air Force as the time I ran away from home. <laughs> but I want to assure you that the young men and women standing before you are not, in fact, running away, but running towards, towards a future full of promise and opportunity. It may not feel like it in this moment, but you are not losing them today. 
but gaining an extended Air Force family which spans the globe. Well, Knights, here we are. What a journey these last two months have been. When you arrived, I welcomed you into the profession of arms and reminded you that like all professions, there were requirements for entry and continued service, as well as standards of conduct. I promised you we would challenge you and evaluate you fairly on your performance and how you adopted and carried out our Air Force core values of integrity, service, and excellence. Our nation has high expectations of its warriors, and therefore, we had high expectations of you. I'm pleased to congratulate you today on not only meeting those high standards, but in most cases, exceeding them. I'm proud of you. Your military training instructors are proud of you. And I know your family and friends cheering you on this dance this morning are proud of you. You've worked very hard to reach this day. Well done. Before I continue, I do want to take a moment to recognize our military training instructors. To my MTIs, thank you. Through your leadership, you have inspired each airman in your flight. And as a result, you personally ensured our newest airmen embody our hope for the future of our nation's security. The airmen standing before us today are your legacy. You should be proud of the fact that you make our Air Force better and our nation stronger with each airman you train. Knights, as you prepare to graduate tomorrow, I remind you that the end of basic training is an important milestone, but it is not an ending. It is the beginning of your Air Force journey. You will need to take lessons and skills you learned here and apply them as you go to technical training to learn your craft and your first operational duty location where you learn to operate independently. You will continue to be challenged, but I'm confident that you are up to the task. Though today we are focused on your successes, it's important to remember that one of the most important lessons we've tried to teach you during your time with us is this. Showing up matters. Striving matters. And working every day to improve and be a good teammate and a good wingman matters. Over a century ago, President Teddy Roosevelt spoke these words. It is not the critic who counts, not the one who points out how the strong stumble or how the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the one actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error or shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends themselves in a worthy cause, who at the best in the end knows the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if they fail, at least fails while daring greatly. Thank you, Knights, for stepping into the arena, for picking up the mantle of responsibility to defend our freedoms and this great nation for the next generation. I'm confident that you, now and always, are ready for battle and will lead our Air Force as the next guarantors of the democracy, the freedom, and the peace of our great nation. At this moment in our history, our nation faces great challenges at home and across the globe. To prevail will take all of us together, daring greatly. And if we stumble, we will fall forward, learn, pick ourselves up, and move forward together as a team, daring greatly once again. And so I leave you with this. Never forget, we are one team. One heart. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Sterling. 
At this time, we would like to take this opportunity to recognize basic military training's most outstanding performer. Someone who demonstrated their ability to successfully navigate all assessments, testing their physical abilities, academic aptitude, and adaptability to the military environment through multiple progress checks. This airman has surpassed all others in the challenges of training and has earned the distinction of being the top graduate of this class. The top graduate is from Flight 206, Airman Christopher J. Perry. He is from Herndon, Virginia, and joined the Air Force to become a command and control battle operations technician. In the stands cheering are his mother and father, Deborah and Kenneth, along with his sisters, Morgan and Monique. His recruiter is Technical Sergeant Rebane from Beaufort, South Carolina. Please stand as a sign of unity as our top graduate leads us through the Airman's Creed. Instructors, place your flights at attention. Seated. Instructors, place your flights at ease. This morning we honor our heritage of military customs and traditions as we welcome our newest airmen into the ranks of the Department of the Air Force. There are two purposes for this morning's retreat ceremony. The retreat ceremony is a solemn event conducted at every United States military installation around the globe. It signifies the end of the official duty day and today is symbolic of the end of training for our graduates. But more importantly, it is to pay respect to our nation's flag. When we offer our respect for our flag and to our national anthem, we have an opportunity to reflect on the democratic principles that have made our nation great. The meaning of freedom, dignity of the individual, the pursuit of happiness, and national unity all come to mind when you think of our flag. It is the symbol of our nation to the world. Military members have a special bond with the flag. These airmen are part of the flag's tradition because they symbolize the spirit and sacrifices of the military and dedication to the defense of this great nation and the principles it represents. When we salute the flag as it is lowered, we ask you to think. Think about the flag flying over Arlington and other national cemeteries. Think about the flag being carried into combat by the service members who preceded us. Think about the freedom Americans enjoy today, freedom without precedent in the history of the world. The men and women who stand before you today represent the projection of the strength behind our flag. Our flag security detail consists of members of the graduating squadron, led by Master Sergeant Andre Harp Thomas. Our commander of airmen is Technical Sergeant Devin Elliott. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the sounding of retreat and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem.
The flag stands for peace, honor, truth, justice, and freedom. In the armed forces of the United States, during the ceremony of retreat, the flag is lowered, folded in a triangle fold, and kept under watch throughout the night as a tribute to our nation's honored dead. The next morning, it is brought out at the ceremony of Reveille. The flag has been torn to strips and used as bandages for wounded combatants on the battlefield. It has been placed in the trembling arms of a grieving parent at the grave of their fallen son or daughter. It is flown at half staff to honor our military members. The flag has flown in every battle of every war for more than 200 years. It has flown at Valley Forge, Shiloh, and Gettysburg. It was there at San Juan Hill, the trenches of France, in the Argonne Forest, Anzio, Rome, on the beaches of Normandy. It was waved at Okinawa, Korea, Vietnam, Somalia, Kuwait, Iraq, and in Afghanistan. It has been burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of countries that America has helped set free. Yet, it remains invincible. Please remain standing for the playing and singing of the United States Air Force song. Congratulations on achieving this historic milestone that marks the beginning of your career. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seating area. The graduates will be dismissed momentarily. 
Families with graduates in the Drum and Beagle Corps are asked to wait for their graduates on the north side of the West Bleachers while they secure their equipment. We ask that you refrain from running onto the retreat pad and please use caution when descending the bleachers. Town pass ends at 20 hundred hours. When dropping off graduates, please stay in your vehicle. Family members are not authorized to enter any training area. Thank you. And please enjoy your stay at 37th Training Wing, Joint Base San Antonio, Lackland, Texas. Thank you. 